Hi, Cancer fans. I just wanted to tell you that Russell's in the hospital. We're at the emergency room right now. He got in severe pain and was just doubled over, and he looked terrible and so gray this morning. And it's the day after Thanksgiving, Friday. It's about 10 to 11 a.m., and um, the fire department came, and then um, they blew out one of his veins, or one of his veins blew out or something. I don't know. But they finally got an IV started, and then they brought him over here to the hospital. And his blood pressure was really low, and he was so just gray looking and just in so much pain. I've never seen him in that much pain. And so they're, they gave him some anti-nausea medication because he's really sick to his stomach. And they um, gave him some morphine. And they're going to do some imaging, see what's going on in there. So keep your fingers crossed. Honey, do you want to say hi to your cancer fans? Hi. We'll get back with you guys later. Hopefully he'll be feeling better and we can go home today. Is the medicine helping? Yeah. Good. Are we rolling? Yeah. Hi. So we just got back from the doctor's office and uh, got all of our prescriptions. Uh, Deanna has high blood pressure. She just got some new medication for that. Yeah. I got some medication for my mouth. The doctor thinks that it's a yeast infection. Uh, I freaking hope so because my mouth hurts so bad right now. For like 10 days now it's hurt and it's just not going away. It gets worse and worse and worse every day. I'm going to show you. I did just get done eating Samurai Sam's. <laughs> so, I Chipotle. Sorry. But anyways, here's my tongue. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. You can see it. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, yeah, you can see it. Can see uh, looks like it's starting to get on the end of my tongue, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, It's very raw and very sore. Yeah. He's hardly been able to eat much at all and just been in a lot of pain with that. Yeah, and like I said, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. So, uh, yeah, I am over this pain. It hurts so bad. So now you're going to take Diflucan. Diflucan yeah. sounds good. And I'm going to take uh, Ver Verapamil Extended Release. 180. And, <laughs> and I also got um, a uh, mouth guard. Yeah. We ordered it off online yesterday. That hopefully will keep my tongue from rubbing against the, my teeth. Mm -hmm. um, I just hope some one of these two things helps because this is ridiculous. I am, it's just miserable. Um, you know, you can't eat. You can't. Plus, I have this like coating on the inside of my mouth where every time I eat something, it tastes like it's covered in chalk. Yeah. My mouth is full of chalk, and then I stick food in there and chew it up. It doesn't taste. Uh, you know, I, I had some ramen noodles yesterday, and it tasted like nothing. I just, I was just putting food in my mouth that didn't taste and it was disgusting. It's so hard to eat. Even the Samurai Sam's, he didn't really like. Yeah, the Samurai Sam's. My Sam. Chipotle, on the other hand, was very good. Yeah, I was kind of jealous of the Chipotle. I ate the whole thing. They got, they have shredded beef there, or shredded pork. That's so good. Carnitas. I don't think they have carnitas anymore. What? They have carne asada, shredded beef. I don't like carne asada. I don't like yeah. shredded beef. And it's kind of spicy. I think theirs is spicy. So, yeah, so this is where we're at right now. Yeah, so uh, do you want to talk about the hospital visit? Like when the, we had to oh, call yeah. the paramedics. And, yeah, so oh, the Friday okay. after Thanksgiving, um, me and Liam were playing games. And the, <laughs> no. Sorry, we're watching a movie. <laughs> we were doing, um, me and Liam were doing his homework. And, of course, I've been in such a bad mood uh, for the past week or so um, I was I was being mean to him um, 
and because, everyone else because he didn't want to do his homework and i just I, I i have no temper left i just i'm go from zero to 60 in no time yeah so he wasn't very happy with me he wasn't very happy at all and you know that's not the way to do your homework with your kid where he was on the verge of crying um, i feel terrible about just my bad dad lately and so anyways uh so we were doing liam's homework i went to i went to the bathroom i had been a, a, like 24 hours since I went and pooped. So I went into the bathroom and I sat down on the toilet and what was happening is, you, you know when you have diarrhea and it, and it kind of like, it's like a roller coaster, you know, you, your stomach hurts, your stomach hurts, and then it goes down and it doesn't hurt and then it hurts again, hurts again, and it goes down. That. And then, well, that's what this was doing. And I thought it was just diarrhea and I was expecting to have some kind of bowel movement. So I went into the bathroom, sat on the toilet for a long time and it kept going up and down, but Every time it would go up and down, it would hurt a little bit up towards my upper abdomen. Um, and it would hurt a little bit more and a little bit more. And pretty soon it hurt so much that I couldn't no longer sit on the toilet. It was just extreme, extreme pain. So I um, got up. I came out here into the living room. And it was just super painful. Uh, like, inc incredible pain. It was, uh, you know, I worked construction my whole life. Yeah, you experience a lot of pain, you know, you hit your thumb with a hammer, you walk into a tailgate or a, a hitch, trailer hitch with your with your shin. Um, all these things hurt like hell. This hurt way worse. This was like the worst pain I've ever had. I couldn't even take a full breath of air. It hurt so bad. I couldn't stop clenching my muscles. I was like locked. My muscles were locked. Um, and I told Deanna, we need to call 911. I'm like, and are you serious? Yeah. That's the first time he I've ever was. called an ambulance. He was on the floor. He couldn't get up. He couldn't sit down. He couldn't lay down. Like everything was terrible. Uh, he was so gray. It was. It was terrible. I thought I was going to die. That's the truth. I thought the I was going to die. The firemen, three firemen came first and they tried to get an IV and then the vein blew out right away, which Russell has really good veins. So that was really weird because now his veins are like shrinking up. I wonder if that's happened to anybody else. You could let us know. Yeah, yeah. The veins are all shrinking up. And then he was just so gray and like he was going to vomit. He had the trash can there and he just could barely stand up. And I just kept thinking, he's going to die. He's just going to yeah, die. Yeah, I thought and he was going to die. And here's my 10-year-old crying because, Liam was like because he thought I was going to die. Crying. I thought I was going to die. Everybody thought I was going to die. Mm -hmm. I thought um, this is it. Russell's just going to die. And yeah, I'll try I not this to This is how people die. <laughs> you know, I just, I just thought I was going to... Because I couldn't breathe. I, yeah. The pain was too extreme he or something. And I couldn't catch my breath. The pain. And I, I couldn't sit down or the pain would get magnified for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I tried laying on the floor and it just, the pain, it just elevated. It just went through the roof. And then the ambulance came and, and the firemen are like, well, you're going to have to, you know, lay down in Which the I didn't. ambulance. I didn't lay down you in the ambulance. You can't stand up. They let me stand up. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, there was no laying down. You never I told me couldn't, that. I couldn't deal with it. And then, um, we, so we had to call, have Liam call his mom and it, we couldn't get a hold of her so she could come and get him. And, um, then I followed the ambulance, you know, after I got that all situated and met him there. And it's really nice when you go by ambulance because they just get you right in. You don't have to wait in the emergency room. Yeah, they, you're right room, on the stretcher. They just moved me right to the room that I was in and, yeah. um, and they, uh, yeah, they, I, I, at that point, um, somehow, about a half an hour, 45 minutes after we were at the emergency room, I actually had a bowel movement. I went into the bathroom, I sat on the toilet, and I just fought through all the pain and pushed and pushed and pushed until something came out. Yeah. And uh, I, so I sat, I was in there for like 30 minutes, and uh, I pooped twice. A diarrhea, like, came out. And it was, there was definitely still some left, but, but I was, but it was, the, the pain had gone down. Um, so, uh, so they decided that it was, uh, well, we didn't know at first because we were very concerned that maybe it was a like an obstruction or then we thought maybe it was a perforation or something horrible, that life-threatening. That's the kind yeah. of pain he was and it in. Was, and it was funny too because it started in my lower abdomen like where it always is when you have diarrhea and it was going up and down. And then all of a sudden it shot up to my upper abdomen and it was just, it was just extreme pain and I was mm -hmm. done. And there was nothing I could do. Uh, I couldn't even hardly walk around and move. Um and uh, that's when we called 911. Yeah. But, you know, it's funny because I, I felt so good. Other than my, my mood swings, well, actually, it's not even a swing. I'm just, from the time I get chemo, for like 10 days, I'm in a horrible mood. I mean, I'm just angry and uh, mean, and I have zero tolerance for anything. 
everything bothers me and I don't let anything go. It just, it's just keeps swirling around in my mind and it builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up until I'm like so mad. Uh, I don't know I'm what to do. Trying to be understand. <laughs> I don't know what to do about it. You know, I, I, uh, I tried to just concentrate on something else. I tried to just, you know, do kind of some kind of a yoga type of thing and it just nothing. I, when I try to do yoga and try to think of other things, it just, I just sit there and get pissed off. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm sure that's a, an effect. Of I everything. hope so. Hopefully in three more sessions of chemo that it's all done and we can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is, this is me after nine sessions up until, up until this ninth session. Um, I felt great. Now I feel like hell. Now he's like falling apart. Yeah, everything's catching up to me. My freaking mouth has hurt for like 10 days. It yeah. is so sore right now. I can't hardly even stand it. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully it is a yeast infection and then yeah. that stuff will just get rid of it. I guess it's really common. So uh, hopefully that works. And so, yeah, we were there for like, what, five or six hours at the yeah. ER. They did a CT scan and turned out that... Um, it was inflammatory colitis. Yeah. Turns out inflammatory colitis hurts like hell. Let yeah. me tell you. I have never uh, experienced any pain like that. Well, I mean, I have before, actually. When my back was, when I hurt my back. Um, and, of course, like when I had a toothache back there. Oh, yeah. Um, toothache toothaches yeah. hurt like hell. But this was, this was immobile. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even move. I couldn't hardly even move. Um, and they it kept was trying making to sit him down, so make sick, lay down. making him so nauseous to his stomach. That's why we thought it was something that burst in there yeah. that I had, was getting poisoned by my own poop or whatever you want to call it. So anyways. Yeah, and then, um, so they so gave romantic. him. romantic. Um, first, they wanted to keep him. They were going to keep him overnight and give him um, IV antibiotics to get him going in his system. But he didn't want to be there any longer, and I didn't blame him. They gave him two shots of morphine. And that made him feel a lot better. Yeah, the morphine really helped a lot. He was sleeping. It was funny on the the little machine that he was hooked up to when whenever he'd fall asleep, you could just tell because the uh, respirations would just rise and fall, <laughs> rise and fall, nice and steady. And then sometimes he'd start snorting, you know. And it... <laughs> I didn't know I fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> It was funny, so, but anyway, yeah, it wasn't rough... funny. It was actually very traumatic, the whole thing. Yeah, my ten... Liam is... Scarred for life. <laughs> like, remember, I think we're all traumatized. He's like, remember that for the rest of his life, probably. Oh, yeah, it wasn't. We've never nothing. had the paramedics have to come to our house. Yeah, that was pretty scary. Or any law enforcement ever, or anything. So, yeah. Um, but I, I'm thankful that I tell you what. What was it that they gave me that you said that was uh, morphine? Yeah, morphine. Yeah, that morphine. That's probably why I was able to f- force myself yeah, to poop because, because before pain. I was in so much pain Medication. that I couldn't push. And now, um, you know, I, it's just a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, now my, I think I have some kind of kidney infection or something because my pee is really yellow and cloudy. Oh, yeah. So, hmm. yeah, I'm just having a lot of trouble. It's it finally catching up to me. It's been a rough, rough, rough time since I, since chemo. I'm not looking forward to the next three sessions of chemo for sure. Yeah. Well, don't think about it yet. So, yeah, Friday you'll be back, you know. Yeah. Back to getting your blood drawn and then Monday... Next one, he's thinking about asking the doctor if he could take a week off or something and, or two weeks. And, but I don't know because I think that might mess up. Yeah. Because he's going to have to take some time off from it. Well, once the 12 is over for sure. But then if they want to do surgery. And we got the referral yeah. today. So to the a surgeon. referral for the surgeon today. So that's good. Yeah, we went we saw our new, our new doctor. What's his name? Um, Hindenburg. And uh, go on. It's a really weird Thomas last name. We should have asked him to say it. Hand Guand. But you don't say the Guand. You say he's the an old gun. dude. He's an old guy. He's a little bit older than us. Yeah. He's a he's a good guy. I, we really liked him. He's, he was very um just down to earth, low key, yeah. uh, not pushy, humorous. You know, it was just a good visit. And we got to yeah. go together, which helped me a lot because I have major doctor anxiety. And uh I think I mentioned that before. And especially when she's all, Do you have high blood pressure? And I'm like well, we're gonna get out the paddles. <laughs> what do I say? I don't want. I don't want the shocking thing. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, the ambulance is on its way. Yeah, I just worry about that. I worry they're gonna find out that oh, she's coding. <laughs> <laughs> right, so ma'am, you're having an irregular heartbeat. I know you're not looking too good. You're not gonna make it. 
I mean, that's all just from getting my blood pressure taken. Can you imagine if I was like the patient, like everything Russell's had to go through? It, oh, it'd be a wreck. Well, it's like I told her, like I told Diana in the car. You know, it's it's a it's a, you find a lot of courage when you when you have a ten year old. Yeah. Um, that depends on you, that you love, that you don't want to leave, and you find a lot of strength. You know, you got to find all the strength that you need. Yeah. So hopefully, we can fight through the rest of this. Um, I've just been feeling really shitty. Um, just a lot of pain, especially my mouth. My mouth is just, I can't even, I mean, I guess I, anybody that's ever bit their tongue really bad, that's what it is on the side of my tongue. Yeah. And the magic mouthwash is not doing anything for it at all. So no, he keeps using it over and over and it's just not doing it. It's like swollen and sore and raw. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you could yeah. see it in the in the video. It probably looks bumpy. pretty disgusting, but my tongue is not that, that disgusting that in real life. If you but... go online and you look at, um, you know, chemo mouth and all that stuff, there's some disgusting stuff yeah. on there. Russell's is not disgusting. <laughs> Am I just starting here at the end? You, you, can, you can see, see the red. red. Yeah. And the side. Right there. Whoo, let me tell you. Yeah. So was there anything else? We went to the hospital. We were there about six hours. They wanted to keep him, but instead he got to go home with um, oral antibiotics. antibiotics. So we got yeah. two different kinds, um, Cipro and Flagyl. And then they also gave him something to help with the waves of cramping um, that he's yeah. supposed to take four times a day. I can't remember what that was called. I actually didn't take that this morning. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I think once the antibiotics kick in, then everything starts to calm down. Yeah, hopefully if I have a kidney infection, it's making my pee all weird colored. Yeah. That, that the antibiotics be. will take antibiotics care of that Antibiotics do that. And sometimes they make your pee smell and stuff. And like the doctor was saying today, it, they can cause yeast overgrowth. And if you already have this. this was before I got my yeah, antibiotics, though. But if you already have this. You know, and it's like Deanna said, maybe, the, maybe my mouth thing is what was causing my colon thing. Because mm -hmm. it might, you know, I, I swallow... And whatever's in my mouth probably goes down into my stomach. And, and not only colon. that, but, you know, it um, the chemo affects the mucous membranes, the linings and stuff. So that's why the tongue is susceptible to it. And so is the inside of your colon because it's all mucous membranes inside there. So it could be all torn up like his tongue and that could be contributing to the pain and stuff. And then the doctor was like 20. Everybody at the oh, hospital at the ER. was like, we were like kids. I was he like, was what the Dookie hell? Was real doctors? He was so young. He was so young, but he was smart. I, and he I, I was nice. What he was talking about, yeah. Some ER doctors are assholes, but no, he was super nice. Yeah, he was good, super helpful. Um, didn't make yeah, the nurse Russell was nice. feel like a, a drug addict or that he was only there for pain medication or something, you know? But, but he made it sound like, oh, it's just, it's just this, and it's like a. Yeah, that can cause some pain. And I was like, some pain? Believe yeah. me, buddy, I know pain. This is <laughs> mega pain. Yeah. So I, that kind of, I didn't like that part where he was like saying that it shouldn't have caused that much pain. But it caused a lot of freaking pain. Yeah. I don't know what, maybe well, it was something. Well, it's probably because, you know, like I said, you're kind of tore up down there because of the thing. That's one thing that the oncologist always asks, how is your stomach doing? Not just the yeah. tumors, but how is your actual stomach? How is everything feeling? And Deanna let me get a Red Bull today. Oh. I'm almost done with it. That was a special treat, special treat. But Unfortunately, my cold thing hasn't gone away yet. So yeah. the ow. first drink of that, especially. And it burns my tongue. tongue. Yeah, so, so he's just... only getting that one, and he's not getting any more <sighs> after that. Till he's all done with chemo. Then you can have one more. <laughs> so bossy. So that's it. Yeah. Um, we are actually um, looking into buying some land in a tiny house. So we might have some tiny house episodes coming up. Yeah. Probably not in the near recent future or in the near future, but in the future, hopefully we'll be doing some of that. Mm -hmm. So we do have plans past the cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as the cancer goes, I feel like I'm still getting better, um, even though my mouth freaking hurts like crazy. But my but my I still feel pretty good. Uh, yeah. I hope that it's going away. And I can't remember, and I didn't uh, remember to look it up, but they did say, because, you know, they did that other CT scan, and they said from the original CT scan that he had when we very first went to the emergency room back in the beginning of July, on July 1st, that um, his tumor, his liver tumor has shrunk down to 4.8 centimeters. Yeah, so it shrank 6 centimeters. Yeah, at least. That, that report said that it was only 10, but then the other report said, one report said it was... 11 and one report said that it was 12 so i think we yeah. had this conversation before about right. uh, 
it's more of an art than a science of reading them and measuring them and everything. So, depending on who's looking at your scans. So, that's it. That's all we got. <laughs> Been so, a rough, rough, yeah. rough couple of weeks. Sorry, we haven't uh, posted any videos in a while. Yeah, I, I was being mean enough to everybody that nobody wanted yeah, to be Yeah, it's like, me, so. what? Well, you, now you want me to edit your video? <laughs> no thanks. You're on your own, mister. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. <laughs> but yeah, it was just, it put it's everybody else in a bad mood. The yeah. energy's contagious. And it for sucks. Sure. You know, there's, it's like, there's, I try to, blow stuff off and I try to not dwell on anything and not uh, let things build up, but there's nothing I can do. And I even thought that if I vented, that if I just said what was on my mind, that it would help. It does not help. Um, it just makes everybody else feel like shit and pissed off. And uh, so I don't know. I have three more sessions to go. Uh, hopefully it doesn't get any worse. I'm hoping that this pain, once I, once, once we get rid of this pain out of my mouth, if we can do that, uh, and keep the pain out of my mouth because it's, it is it is pretty extreme pain and it's it gets so old. Yeah, when you're in constant pain. Yeah, I'm hoping that once the pain's gone, it will, it will help me not be so grumpy. I know when I get migraines and stuff, it's like, don't talk to me, don't look at me. I'm gonna be in here alone. Just leave me alone, everyone. That's what I've been doing. I went into <laughs> leave my game me alone. Yeah. I have a what do they call those beds? Futon. Futon. I have a futon yeah. in there. I just pulled the futon out. I've been sleeping in there for like a week. Someone, I can't remember the name, but suggested that um, we put a full mattress on top of the... No, but I still want to be able to fold it up. Fold it up. Yeah, just for comfort. Yeah, because that mattress sucks. It's, it's hard to sleep on. Yeah. But me and Liam sleep on there every game night and every um, movie night. They have we their both special sleep on movie there. night. Yeah, so and I always sleep against the wall, which is the most comfortable spot. I feel bad. <laughs> Next, um, but he moves around, so I can't really sleep... I can't let him sleep against the wall because then he will push me. I don't know. I, I I should probably let him sleep on the comfortable side of the bed. Oh, he probably doesn't care. Kids are much more flexible. Yeah, he he seems to be like pretty that. good sleeper. He'll sleep anywhere. <laughs> but yeah, that's that. I love that sleeping with him. When yeah. when he was a, when he was a kid before me and Deanna got together, um, we slept in the same bed every night, and I would snuggle up to him. Yeah. And, um, then we got together and everything changed. Yeah. So kind of took that Jana away. needs snuggles too, but. But I have the dogs. So. so yeah, it's, it's, I love, I love, cause he's still, he's only 10. He's still pretty snuggly mm -hmm. and he likes the affection and he, he yeah. I, I love it. So it makes my day, makes me very and his, happy. His oldest um, sibling, like his half brothers and sisters, the, there's an eight year, isn't it eight year difference Probably between him somewhere. and Abby? Yeah. yeah so know. he's kind of like an only child. I know I had an eight year difference between my two kids. And when Ethan was born, it was like Jessica was more like in a caretaker role. She was eight years old. You know, they, yeah. they never were really played together. Yeah. Like it was like Ethan was the only child basically. And she was an only child because I waited eight years to have another one. And I was way too overprotective with Liam. I didn't. I, I was afraid to let him go out and play because I was afraid kids were going to be mean to him. And um, I just, I, I've been a bad dad. I'm hoping that now I'm going to be a better dad. You know, I certainly, uh, I don't take as much for granted as I used to. You know. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, I can be a better dad, better husband, better everything. Anyways, yeah. all we can do is just learn from the past and keep trying and keep moving forward yep. that's all anybody can do we just try to do our best but that's we have we you know we, we're, we're looking forward to getting this tiny house and this, this land and it is it is going to be land in arizona and up or up north a little bit yeah so it's still kind of arid um it actually has what half the rainfall of michigan and the temperature is but twice the amount of rainfall is phoenix, is phoenix where yeah. we're at right now which is almost nothing and 20 degree um, cooler year round, which would be. But it was only like awesome. five degrees warmer than Michigan, right? Average. I think so. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's nice. And then what else about it? Um, not too bad. Yeah, it doesn't have any big trees. All of the trees are kind of bushy. We're going to go there this weekend. We'll take some. Uh, yeah. We'll take a video of the land and everything. Yeah, they're pinion there. pines and juniper trees which is better than you know sagebrush. Sagebrush, yeah. yeah so it's a high desert climate instead of the low valley climate that we're in right now so it's it's enough oh i know what i was gonna say it's um 
uh, four mild seasons, so not real extreme. I mean, it gets some snow, but only like 16 inches. So you, you're going to get the, you know, fall leaves changing. Well, not on those evergreens, but, you know, if you plant anything that... Uh, right. Which we do want to have some trees. We're going to try to find, figure yeah. out a way to capture some more, you know, when it does rain, then we'll, we want to capture that water. So right. we don't have to... And there's no, there's no water ran to those properties. So... Yeah. But they do have a like a community well mm -hmm. where you can get a tank and put it on a trailer, which we have a trailer. So, mm -hmm. um, but the problem is that once the once the tank is full of water, um, we won't be able to drive the trailer anywhere. So the tra the trailer will basically just be a water tank trailer. Yeah. So which is okay. And we were thinking yeah. about. I'm not sure if how many pounds that trailer could handle, but it'd be nice to be able to get two tanks. Yeah. Um, well, it depends. You know, you may only need one if it's big enough. Yeah. It's always nice to have a backup water source. Well, also, we don't want the water to sit very long either, for too long. Probably. Yeah. Well, we're going to insulate it and everything. But anyway, so that's really exciting and yeah, fun. Yeah, because, so we're definitely uh, excited about that. Looking forward to going yeah. up there this weekend with Liam and checking it out. Yeah. Yeah. There's good opportunities out there. You just have to uh, know where to look. You know, if we had our preference, we would be in the normal pine trees and all the forest type land. Yeah, these trees are like eight, ten foot tall. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're more like bushes. Yeah, you're big you're bushes. paying three times, if not more, for way less space. This well, is plus, two acres. Liam, so. Li, you know, Liam's mom lives in Phoenix, yeah. so we could, can't go too far away. Yeah. Um, this and is two hours, an hour and a half away. All the benefits are here in Arizona. Yeah. And the doctors and everything. Although they do have, you know, doctors uh, up there, too, yeah. and a cancer center and everything. So Which we'll probably be switching over. Yeah, to but I figure we should probably, like, I mean, we haven't even talked about this yet, but I was thinking that we should just... Um, Stick with what we're doing until you're through with the oh, yeah, surgery. Oh, yeah, sure, for sure. Um, I think it's called the cycle, the, all the rounds, or then the whole complete cycle. Yeah, somebody asked what, what happens after the chemo. What do we do after the chemo? So the after the chemo, the plan is to get surgery. Um, hopefully, they can remove all the cancer. And then you have to go through some post-surgery chemo um, where they just, I guess they kill any stragglers that are yeah. wandering around in your bloodstream. And if they know for sure, that, you know, that's if they could get it all. But if they know for sure that they didn't get it all, then he'll definitely be on some kind of um, maintenance chemo where it well, maybe he could switch over to the pill thing. Yeah, but that's for that. sure. Yeah. Um, because I feel like um, this, this, all this pain and all these things that I've been experiencing is caused because when I did my last chemo, that one package wasn't dripping and I don't know how true how that is but one of the packages wasn't dripping and I could feel it it burned in my my chest and it burned on my tumor down in my lower abdomen mouse come on oh, he's pooping on the floor he's, well he's on the pad well he was no, on the pad no, no. now he's not on the pad so we should probably go yeah that's the that's our that's our key all right so thank Signing you for watching off. us bye bye okay bye